I have learned at your feet and um, there's so much I've learned and mm -hmm. I think I'd like you to teach a lot of people out there. Um, let's, let, let's rewind a bit. Not a lot of people. Not a lot of people. So let's, let's <laughs> rewind a bit. Not everyone is teachable. To, let's rewind a bit to how you started when you got married because you're married to a Muslim. You raised a Christian. Um, they said in the Bible that... And I'm still a Christian. Yeah, still a Christian. If an how, assistant pastor. And exactly. How did that happen? You, you're pastor in Redeem. You're, yes. uh, how did that happen? Did, did you get a backlash from the church saying you're unequally yoked with an unbeliever? And how did you manage that period? You see, everyone is welcome to come to church. Mm. Nobody has the right to judge anyone that comes to the church. Yes. Those who judge are religious which we see in the times of Jesus. Mm. Everyone, even Christ said, come to me all those who labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. You know, take my yoke, it is easy. My body is light so that you will have rest for your soul. The church is a hospital. Mm. It's just a spiritual hospital. You don't go to church if you don't need God. Mm. So everyone that walks into a church needed something from God. And God said, no one comes to me that I will by any means cast away. It is religion that will say, oh, you didn't have this. I remember the first time I even went to uh, Turkey. I was wearing a black long skirt yeah. and a jacket. And I thought I was churchy enough. And I wore a toban. But you can see how the church now is everybody's wearing to ban. They put this there, they put that there. But I saw a pastor walked up to me and said, you look like all those people from Turkey. I look like the Turks, that is the Muslim. Mm. Then I said, when we come to God, are we not supposed to just have our heads covered as women? Mm. Is that not what I've done? Then I walked away. Because one, I understand the criticism. Mm. You know, maybe because I'm light-skinned and because I was wearing black, and most of these women in Puda, they will wear black. And I thought, you know, my toban was even shiny enough to <laughs> even blend to the church. But now you can see what is happening. Mm. Everybody saw how easy it is mm. to have your head wrapped, you know, mm. and then also get to the church. Back to my marriage. When I met my husband, I didn't even know that it's a big deal. We are from the Anglican sect. Right. And um, I don't think then church was that a lot of people, mar a lot of Christians married Muslim right. men. We just see this man that, you know, maybe, oh, this is a man I can marry or can, I can work with. But with my husband, it was quite different. It was my sister that introduced us. Mm. All right? So I just thought, oh, I, you know, I will meet a man that can take care of me. I didn't know men are all the same. <laughs> <laughs> men are all the same, so we thank God. But you see, one of the things that was really profound for mm. me, when we both went home to see my dad, my dad asked him, are you a Muslim? That was the first time I would hear that. Mm. You're a Muslim. I hope you will not prevent my daughter from going to church. And he promised him. Mm. So religion... Then, for me, I knew something is not right here mm, mm. for the first time. Right. Because one, I didn't know the word that much. Mm. To know that, oh, you, are, you know, you're going to be heading into a lot of trouble. Well, have there been conflicts as a, as a white married to a Muslim where they are doing ilayah? You mean with something? my husband? Yeah, are there uh, issues okay. as Don't a Muslim? you even come to the house. <laughs> Haven't you been to the house for ilayah once? <laughs> anyway, we'll get into that. But the point is, with him, is quite respectful of my faith right. and if somebody respects you mm. it's only just honorable for you to show respect right. because he respects my faith i respect his faith right. so there is no conflict there right. it doesn't stop me from praying even if some pastors come in to visit, he also has a lot of pastor friends. <laughs> Please, he has a lot of pastor friends that I met from him. Right. You understand? Right. My husband is very, very liberal mm. when it comes to faith. His faith is right here. And mm. I think that is what God said. Mm. Don't you know your vessel is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Mm. So this is the temple of God. It depends on what you fill it in right. with. Right. You know, even there was no... No religion when Jesus, when God visited Abraham and mm. said, 
because you believed me, mm. I will count this unto righteousness. Yes. God said, I will show mercy to whomever I will show mercy. Because it's God and compassion to whomever. Mm. Who knows how, how many of us Christians will make it on that day? Sure. Who knows? Right. And even the Bible also said that at that day, you will see children from the east, the west, at the feet of Abraham, mm. whereas children of this so-called kingdom will be cast into mm. darkness. So faith is something that is very, very, very complex. But for me, being married to a Muslim, I never had any problem. But when it is time for me to put on hijab during his event, I would do that as a sign of respect. Right. But that doesn't change my faith. Right. Right. Okay. And, um, and I think he has his own faith as well. Right. Right. But he didn't. And he didn't impose that on our children. Mm. I raised my children as Christians. Despite they bear Muslim names. Right. Yes. Right. Because that is what I understand. Okay. Okay, we'll, co we'll come back to that. Now, um, I read one of your books where you talked about the fact that you became first lady at the age of 39. That was pretty young. You had the burden of the whole state as a wife of the, of, of the governor. How did you handle that responsibility? Like I said, that God, if God, if you know, you get into a position that you never, never envisaged in your lifetime that you will occupy. Mm. You believe that is a privilege and God must have made you to become that. So you have to go back to God. How do I do this? So thank God why before I became first lady, we were in self-exile for almost five years. Mm. And when you have problems, you know, the only person you can run to is God. So while I was in the US, ah, I went to church. I went to church. That was where I became born again. Mm. You know, I went in as... Um, I went in into exile as Anglican. an Anglican, but I came out of exile as a Pentecostal. Mm. And um, I remember then I was looking for God from one church to the other, for, to the other, to the other. It was very difficult time. Mm. I hardly talk about it because when I came back, I had amnesia. Mm. I lost my memories. It was really, really traumatic for me. And that was one of the things that don't even make me attend parties, social gatherings. Mm. Because people walk up to me, I can't even recognize them anymore. Wow. Yes. When you have amnesia, it's a form of loss of memory. Mm. And usually comes out of a very, very traumatic experience. It was traumatic for me because then I was around 34. First time to be separated from your husband. And then you are stuck with two children with a lot of responsibility that you never even envisage that you'll be able to do. And then you see human beings at their very core of being mean, mm. you know? And um, you only know friends in times of trouble. Right. So I learned a lot. And when you have young children who cannot even talk to you, raising, and your husband is in there, because my husband even couldn't come see us until a year, 18 months after. So it was traumatic because then they locked them up for a while during their bachelor time yes and then he had to go through the border to get into neighboring countries yeah. and his passport the only passport he had then was just a diplomatic passport mm. so the diplomatic passport couldn't get in to go to uk because they had like an embargo what did they have it there were sanctions mm. there were sanctions on diplomats because of June 12th. Right. UK was even allowing them, but US would not allow any diplomat. Mm. So what the only passport he had then was a diplomatic passport. So he had to go to a neighboring West African country to obtain their passport to come see us. Mm. So, and I think US allowed that. So they know he's Nigerian mm. with another country's okay. passport. So it was through that passport, he travels to see us once every six months mm. because the struggle for democracy was still on mm. but for me to raise the children to go to school because they were very very young mm. very very young mm. i think my youngest was two two and a half at the time you know it mm. was a very very i, I hardly talk about it mm. i think i'm good <laughs> now but it was really really traumatic mm. for me so when i came back and became first lady it was 
it was something else. What did that experience teach you being that's first what lady? I, that's what I wanted to even say. I, I saw it as um, a huge privilege, mm -hmm. you know, and I decided that most of my friends, I don't even, I don't even have a large group of friends before. Right. So, but they are like my sister's friends, family friends, right. you know, all of that in right. total. But some that I would say my friends that I worked with, I couldn't recollect them mm -hmm. anymore. So, and some family members too, that family friends rather, mm -hmm. I couldn't recall, recognize some of them. So coming into First Lady, I believe that I just have one empty treasure box. Mm -hmm. I started making new friends, mm -hmm. you know, because I noticed that my life has changed from then on. So I had to make friends that will help me with that position. Mm -hmm. So then I have mentors. Mm -hmm. I also have, um, I also have confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, confidence you can't have more than one or two. <laughs> one in a lifetime, right. I had one. Right. So, which is older, mm -hmm. to advise me. And I check in with them. I don't just go and do anything. I have people I check in with. Okay. So check in with them mm -hmm. and they advise me. And also, I look around, where, what can I change in society? Mm. Because it's not something for free. Right. So I look at a problem and then I face it head on. Let's talk about your children for a moment. We haven't seen them around. We hardly, we know of them, but we, don't, we haven't seen them. Why have you what kept you them away? Them? We know they are two beautiful young girls, you know, okay. uh, but we've not seen them. Why do you keep them away from the media or for, from society? Why, why shouldn't we see your children out there? They are not the one working for you to start with I'm the one working for you they are not the one working for you you see one of the things I learned even while living in America I learned from the Clintons mm. and I think the Clintons passed it on to the Obamas mm. the Clintons said you can touch us but don't touch my kid mm. leave them out of politics and when the Obama came in the Obamas came in you can see it's almost they told that line even, and I think the Bush th did. And you can see that most presidents are like that, except the ones that their children are grown and visible, they can own mm. their own. My children, my youngest was three and a half when my husband was governor. Mm. So I think, no, maybe about five. Mm. Because she went to boarding school at six. Mm. She would tell me, mom, you threw me to boarding school at six. And the sister was seven plus. So they all were in boarding school, and they were all in boarding school in England. And later, they were moved. They moved from one boarding school to the, to the other. And then because with England, you have to go back and forth, especially when they had exit. They were very young, mm. and I'm not going to have people raise my children. Because we came in from exile, I don't know anyone. Right. And you don't have, expect me to just have a complete stranger and throw my children exactly. to. Even when they come on holidays, and I learned the ad way, even the oddly, the so-called oddly I had then, that was very close to me. At times, I would even ask this oddly to go be with them during exit. They were so close to her. Mm. And this oddly left and never came back. I've not even seen her till today. This girl traveled the world to me. And you know what my kid said? The moment my kid said, so we won't see Miss Shola anymore. It broke my heart. Mm. And I remember some friends we also made in politics that I introduced them to. And then you know politics, they are your friend one day, they are not the right, other time. Right. And they say, they would not ask me, you mean we are not going to be friends with Susan and so anymore? <laughs> How do you want me to start explaining that to a little child? And then one of the thing is, don't raise children when they are young and you neglect them. Mm. Lagos State work is very, very consuming, especially during my husband's time. And one of the things, even during Christmas holiday, when they come by, I remember on Christmas day, we were, we, one particular Christmas, they made cake, they rehearsed what they were going to do for us. Yeah. They were ready. We didn't get back very late <gasps> until that night. Oh and goodness. I felt so bad because the president came to town and the first lady then of the nation, yeah. we had to go yeah, and receive them, receive them. Right. and you know and there was one event and then that maybe oh. we went with them so we didn't get home until late my husband was tired i was tired and they were like and it hurt me so much mm. and i remember putting them in another school that they could be there for two and a half months mm. so there they were able to travel so right. like my 
children, they became like the one citizen, <laughs> you know. And because they were not also born here, yeah. so they were born in the States, yeah. so they can move yeah. around. So, but I didn't want them here. Mm. They also did not like the attention. So okay. they do their own thing, thing and they actually thank me for it. Oh, Each time good. they thank me, I said, Mom, we thank you. Not that we are not proud of what you do. Mm. We thank you because you don't allow, you know, you don't allow mm. people to mm. come into our space mm. that we can be who we want to be. Okay, I have to ask you this question because people hear your story and they say, ah, she had a good uh, family uh, bringing her up. She had sisters, people who took care of her. She got married to a, a good man. She was privileged. Do you think... A rich man. A rich man. Mm -hmm. Do you think... No, why like, don't you say that? Okay. Rich man. You're not a rich Over man. Over 30 something years <laughs> in marriage. <laughs> but, people, but my question to you, Mai, is do you say, would you say life has been good to you? Have yes. you had any challenges? Because people see and think you're perfectly okay. Yes. Not, this woman hasn't been through any hurdles. What about you? Are you not perfectly okay?